Age-appropriate dentistry. What do we mean by age-appropriate dentistry? What is appropriate perhaps for a 20-year-old is not appropriate for the 80-year-old. And speaking of the 80-year-old, the 80-year-old is concerned about health, comfort, and less, ex and less concerned about aesthetics and looks as the younger patient. And age is not a major consideration if the patient is mentally aware and physically healthy. For today's 80-year-old is virtually the same as the 50-year-old 20 or 30 years ago. They're more vital, they're more active, and certainly they deserve to have the treatment done that is most practical to them. Our job on the older patient is to plan treatment that is simpler, less invasive, can be accomplished in less time, and typically this means it's less expensive. All of these are certainly concerns and things that the older patient would take into consideration. And here's a quote that I think is a starting quote we want to start with. If you always do what you've always done, you will always be what you've always been. And on my video textbook, there are many videos on there showing dentists what can be done based on the procedures that we're going to talk about today. So don't hesitate to ask your dentist questions and to show your concern and become a more educated dental consumer. Why is this man not smiling? Well, if you'll look at this, he's 69 years old. We can see where the uh, recession is. We can see the blackened area on the receded areas. We can see how jumbled the teeth are. Yet this patient is 69 years old. How would you treat this patient if they were 20 years old? First of all, you would have orthodontic treatment done to correct the malocclusion. This is a complicated orthodontic case. Would probably take over two years to treat. Is this 69 year old patient going to elect to have orthodontic treatment done, which could take over two years to do? Probably not. So what treatment options would the ordinary dentist give to this patient? Probably offer some veneers and crowns on those front teeth at $1,000 each, and that could be a $6,000 treatment plan, and yet on the lower, the patient would still have the malocclusion. Or is there a treatment option on there? because this is where the patient started and this is where the patient ended up after a very simple procedure that probably could be done in an hour to an hour and a half. And this is dentin bonding. And dentin bonding uh, on these upper teeth, a, a, probably a good fee for this or a proper fee would be about $1,800. But if you had six porcelain crowns veneers, it would be $6,000 but we were able to give this patient what he wanted for considerably less money. Is it wrong to do the crowns and veneers? Absolutely not. But always ask your dentist if there is a simpler procedure. And what happens if you decide not to have this? You're not challenging the dentist. You're just asking questions that are appropriate given your situation. Why is this man not smiling? And after having the veneers done, the bonded veneers, look at this smile. The sad thing is this guy had gone through many years looking like he did, not seeking dental treatment for fear of the amount of cost that it would be. But is this one happy patient for $1,800? You bet he is. And why? what is the beauty of bonding? Well, first of all, it's far less expensive, as I pointed out. Number two, it's much easier to do, takes much less chair time, and finally, it's easy to repair. For if an area of the bonding material chips off, you can just rebond that area. But if a crown chips or a porcelain veneer chips, your only option is to redo the veneer or crown. And one of the problems in doing that is the new veneer or crown may not match the other teeth. So consider dentin bonding as an option to create an aesthetic effect when it is appropriate to do that. Periodontal plastic surgery for treating recession 
as an alternative to gum line fillings. Gum line fillings are officially referred to as class 5 fillings. In periodontal plastic surgery, the definition of this is surgery to correct anatomical, developmental, or traumatic deformities of the gingiva or alveolar mucosa. This was a definition that I presented in 1988, and I think that I have a better understanding of this since I coined the term and wrote the article. The simplest root coverage procedure to do is the CPF, or the coronal position flap. And this is video lecture number 18 on my web textbook, and something that perhaps your dentist would need to look at because most dentists are not familiar of how simple this technique can be. Here we see on the lateral incisor, next to the central on the left, recession and a class five re restoration was placed there and it lasted about three or four years. And on the bicuspid, you can see the recession there but the main thing we're going to focus on is the class 5 restoration on that canine tooth. And you can see on that tooth the red area up above and taking that filling out and doing a coronal position flap as we see the gum line filling here. And these are the receded areas that I'm talking about mentioned earlier on the uh, lateral and the first premolar where restorations did not last very long. And the first thing we did was to remove that defective restoration. And if you look on the right, you can see the sound tooth structure underneath that. And by doing the coronal position flap, we can go from here to here in about six weeks. Now, that gum will actually attach to that root and will remain there forever unless you get in there and vigorously brush that away. So proper tooth brushing is very important in the prevention of gum line recession. The coronal position flap, just to tell you how simple this is, Jennifer Boylan, who was a four months out of dental school and a resident in our general dentistry program, saw this particular patient. And as we look here, we can see the recession and you can see the abrasion or wear on the tooth that was caused by the toothbrush. Certainly doing nothing here is fine, especially if the area is not sensitive, but younger patients prefer to have this treated with a coronal position flap. You as an older patient may elect to do nothing, or you may elect to have gum line fillings placed, and three gum line fillings here would cost about $140. But doing the coronal position flap, as we see here, we can produce this result in about the same amount of time that you could have the fillings done. And would you rather have something that would last you a lifetime or something that's only going to last about three or four years? That's a decision you as an older patient needs to make. And it needs to be based on comfort, your financial situation, and your desires. And simply asking the dentist, what are the treatment options? Asking if they are aware of the coronal position flap. And if they say no, then go to my website and look at the 15 minute video and you will help the general dentist understand and perhaps learn how to do another uh, procedure. What about root caries? We can see the frank decay in one area. We can see a little superficial filling there. And this is unesthetic and it is not of a concern to the patient. It is not sensitive, but do you want to have this area corrected? I would, and I'd rather do something that's going to last a lifetime and not have something that's only going to last three or four years and make my teeth look like fangs. So you can see in here where the fillings have been removed, and then we've taken periodontal instruments, scalers, and really polished that dentin to give a smooth surface so that that gum can be brought down very simply. Here it is brought down, and you can see the simpling suture, the simple suturing that was done there. And then we see preoperatively what it looked like and the way that it looked about six weeks later. Again, is this something that you want? Do you want class five gum line fang looking fillings or do you want to leave it alone? I'm not going to sit in judgment of that. I'm here to present the facts and let you find your way. Look at how gum line fillings can really complicate the situation. 
very similar to the last case, and we can see the red irritated tissue where a class 5 restoration has been done, and look how much longer and fang-like that tooth looks compared to the right central. Here is where the gum line should be, and it should match up with the gum line on the adjacent tooth if you want to have the maximum aesthetic result. But look what the dentist did, and I don't criticize this. This was the state of the art probably 20 years ago. And they put a class 5 filling in, but to make it stay because we didn't have bonding at that time, they had to undercut the enamel to create a lock so the filling would go to place. Well, that lock means that I've got to go in there and use a dental burr to flatten that area because the gum is not going to attach over a concavity. You've got to have a smooth, flat surface for that to happen. So here we see the final result where the gum has been brought down, and subtly there's something that you probably don't see. If we look on the right, you can see how pink that tissue is and how prominent it is facially because there's a root underneath there. But on the left, where we had to flatten the root, yes, we have got the gum line where it's supposed to be, but notice that red tissue, which reflects light, di light differently, and it appears sunken in. And what was ne what would have been necessary in this case was to place some grafting material underneath that, which markedly increases the fee, perhaps is out of the realm of treatment of the general practitioner, which would require the patient see a specialist or a periodontist to get the most aesthetic result. Is there an indication for gum line fillings? Absolutely. And this is a, a case where the patient had GERD or acid re uh, regurgitation and that eroded off the enamel. So certainly we need to go in there as we see on the right and before doing the graft there, which would be necessary in this case, I as a periodontist would send it back to the restorative dentist to create a normal junction between the enamel and the root, as you can see on the right. And then we can go in there and do uh, a grafting material and we can see how much thicker the gingiva is here than it was before. A much more complicated procedure because grafting is much more complicated than simply coronal positioning the flap. So what I've done today, I hopefully, is to give you some ideas and questions that you need to ask your dentist when you go there to become a knowledgeable dental consumer. And certainly asking questions and looking for more information is certainly not something that your dentist is going to resent. And you absolutely, by advising him or her to go to this website and look on how to do these procedures, you may make that dentist a better dentist.